Hello everybody, thanks for checking out my channel, Opportunity Electrical. If you're new to the channel, please consider checking out my other videos. Um, I make content on tool reviews, uh, career and education specifically for electricians. I enjoy making content like this for all of you and it would mean a lot to me to help motivate me to do more videos and make better videos. If you would please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel, that would be great. I appreciate it. All right, this video is my first time I'm going to do a suggested video from a comment. So this one comes from Glamour Boy Peter, who wrote, talk more about becoming a journeyman electrician for absolute beginners, pros and cons, pays, benefits, and all. I appreciate to everybody who comments. Um, I try to respond to most of the comments, but please drop a suggestion for future videos down below and maybe I can do your video. Okay, so this, for this video, I'm going to do in general, what's the deal with being a journeyman electrician? Um, talking about what is a journeyman electrician, how to become a journeyman electrician, day-to-day -day life sort of thing, pros and cons, pay, benefits, job outlook, so on and so forth. Wikipedia's definition of a journeyman is a journeyman is a worker skilled in a given building trade or craft who has successfully completed an official apprenticeship qualification. What's kind of neat about the electrical trade and several other trades is the history behind the craftsman's guild having the ranks of apprentice to journey to master goes all the way back to medieval Europe. Um, I pulled this from Wiki as well regarding the history of the trade guilds. This is a quick quote. The term journeyman was originally used in the medieval trade guilds. Journeymen were paid daily and the word journey derived from the French journée meaning whole day in French. Each individual guild generally recognized three ranks of workers, apprentices, journeymen, and masters. A journeyman as a qualified tradesman would become a master and run their own business um, but most continued working as employees. When it comes to most state governments in the United States, including my own for the electrical trade, we stick to this same medieval rank system. An apprentice trains underneath a journeyman or a master for around four years and then becomes eligible to test to obtain their journeyman electrician's license. Once they pass that exam, they will be issued a license certificate and an ID card that states their name and license number and now can work by themselves without supervision. They can be issued a certain ratio of apprentice per journeyman. In my state, it's three apprentices for every one journeyman, but they cannot own their own business unless they become a master electrician. From my experience, most journeymen just stick with being a journeyman and never test for their masters for their own and start their own business. Um, since journeymen can get apprentices and work by themselves, a lot of times a foreman is synonymous with journeymen, unless there are multiple journeymen on the same job, then you might be a journeyman working underneath a foreman under that circumstance. To summarize, a journeyman electrician is an electrician who successfully completed their apprenticeship program and passed their exam to be officially licensed. So we know what a journeyman is, but how do you become one? Well, that's gonna vary from state to state across the United States. I'm not positive how it works abroad outside the United States. So if you are an international viewer and had the time to comment your country's requirement for becoming a journeyman electrician, please comment that below. Generally in the US, how it goes is you have to complete your apprentice program and then take an exam. An apprenticeship is typically four years or 8,000 hours work experience registered as an apprentice working under the direct supervision of a journeyman or a master. You have your apprentice hours completed. You then can take the state exam, which is typically on the national electrical code and electrical theory and trade practices, that sort of thing. The exam I took was around four hours long. Um, depending on where you live, you may also need to complete some sort of education requirement during your apprentice years or before. Um, I have a link down below for a video I made that goes uh, into detail and in depth about the education routes that you can go down as an apprentice electrician. Okay, so to recap, you need to complete your local apprentice requirements before you're eligible to take your journeyman exam. Um, once you complete your apprenticeship and pass your test, you're officially a journeyman. Day-to-day -day life as a journeyman electrician is going to vary a lot depending on what sector of the trade you work in, so residential, commercial, service, maintenance, so on, as well as what size of the projects you typically work on. Since this video is supposed to be a general summary, I will talk about just on average, marginally what being a journeyman electrician is like. Unlike apprentices, a journeyman electrician is responsible for keeping the crew busy. That means you have to be ahead of the ball when it comes to having material on site, as well as making sure everything in the job is running in sequence. What I mean by sequence is there's various different priority levels on a construction site that need to be addressed. This can be a problem if other trades are relying on you to get the job done so they can do their next step. 
Um, an example I can give is getting your boxes ran and wire ran inside a wall. Framers have to first build the wall before you can put your stuff in and then once you're done then the sheet rockers come and cover up all the walls so if there's a big rush to get the walls finished you might have to delegate the crew to go get out of the walls. That's just one small example. Another big change going from apprentice to journey level is attending meetings and being on the phone. Your phone contact list will be pretty long to become a journeyman, I would recommend putting people's company's name first before their first name. That way, if you're trying to get a hold of somebody and you forgot their name, you can at least search their company and vice versa. Um, your phone will be buzzing all day between general contractors and project managers and apprentices and supply houses, delivery truck guys, various other subcontractors, building inspectors, other journeymen within your company. Uh, you get the point. As a journeyman, you will also be running more equipment um, than an apprentice might telehandlers and forklifts to unload trucks or move around heavy material, uh, mini excavators to dig trenches, skid steers for dirt work and for drilling light pole bases, for example. In general, for someone who isn't familiar with the trades, think of being a journeyman as being a foreman. Um, you would be less about the grunt work on the job site and more about making sure the job is running smoothly. Um, some journeymen on bigger job sites with crews of a dozen and several dozen electricians might never use their tools since they're so busy running the job and managing everything. Other journeymen might work with their tools all day long. Um, in my personal experience, I had days where I maybe used my tools for a half hour out of a 10 hour workday. Other days I used them just as much as my apprentices did. Um, in general, I would say since an electrician is a building trade, um, you're still gonna be working with your tools and with your hands. I personally was a type of journeyman who thought it showed good leadership uh, to also work on stuff shoulder to shoulder next to your apprentices. I had the philosophy of I'm not the coach, I'm the quarterback. It kind of goes without saying that pay can vary based upon where you live and what your local job market's equilibrium for wages are. If you're looking for a comparison to your local state area, the state I live in, the average income is $36,000 a year for all jobs, so you can compare these numbers with that. For a licensed journeyman, you can expect to make low-end $25 an hour and high-end $45 an hour. That is excluding benefits and job bonuses. I would say the average is around $32 an hour or $66,000 a year based upon 40 hours a week. Um, because the skilled trades are in high demand uh, and because it's kind of a process to get uh, licensed as an electrician, most journeyman electricians work overtime. So that $66,000 per year can turn into more like 70 or 80 pretty quick considering overtime uh, wage on average would probably be around $50 an hour. That's why a lot of times if you search like the typical career websites, how much does a jur or how much does an electrician make, you'll see that $60,000 a year. Um, that's because they're probably asking for the hourly rate and then they times that by 2,080 hours a year for 40 hours a week. Realistically, a lot of electricians work at least 45 hours a week. As far as a benefit package is concerned, every journeyman electrician I know has company offered 401k, retirement, health, vision, dental, paid time off, tool and clothing allowances. Um, a big difference in your benefits package is going to be whether or not you are a union member in the IBEW or if you're non-union. Having been an estimator for a union shop at a previous job, it's not my political opinion that union shops have better pay and benefits in my area of the world. It's just an objective fact that they have better benefits for sure. Um, a non-union benefit package is probably, for a journeyman, is probably around three to four dollars an hour when you add everything up. And for a union, it's closer to like twelve dollars an hour when you add everything up. Wages are pretty close to the same for union and non-union as far as just dollar an hour goes um, on the paycheck. But total package, you might be making an additional $10 an hour if you are union once you factor in how much more they cover for health care and retirement and that sort of a thing. For my local IBEW health care plan, uh, the premium is $0. So for a family plan, you pay $0 a month for a health insurance premium, which is rare in the United States. Um, however, something that I have recently noticed in my tri-state area is non-union contractors are starting to offer job bonus structures similar to what project managers get for the on-site foreman. I've heard of upwards to $40,000 a year bonuses additionally from what your base pay is or your hourly pay is if your projects are making money. I have no personal experience getting job bonuses as a journeyman electrician, but I have seen it advertised and I do have friends who have received them. Ultimately, 
when you're looking at union versus non-union, don't let political ideologies pollute your decision making. Just be a rational actor and ask yourself, who is offering me the best pay and benefits that will be to the advantage of me and my family, regardless of who you work for. That's just my advice. Another benefit that's underrated in my opinion as a journeyman is a company vehicle. Uh, most journeyman electrician get a company vehicle with a gas card that they can then drive that vehicle to and from work every day and park it at their own residence. And most companies are fine with you running personal errands to work vehicle too, since they kind of view it as advertising their business since the company information is painted all over the truck with their phone number and website and everything else. If you add up the savings on gas and vehicle maintenance, as well as potentially car payments, this is actually a pretty good benefit. This is something unique to being a journeyman. I have never heard of an apprentice getting a company vehicle and a gas card. The job market will be promising for journeyman electricians since it's easier to hire an apprentice than it is a journeyman. Also with local laws saying apprentices need to be supervised by a journeyman and there's a ratio of X amount of apprentices per one journeyman. For each additional journeyman you can hire, that potentially is another project you can bid. So in general, I would say a journeyman are more employable than apprentices even though they are a lot more expensive. I have heard of some smaller companies saying that they can't hire apprentices, but they can hire a journeyman because they might only do service work where you're in a truck all day long doing maintenance and remodel type work. And a lot of the times it's only a one man job. So since apprentices can't legally work by themselves, a smaller service shop might not have much need for apprentices. They might have more need for journeymen. Part of the viewer's comment was asking for pros and cons, so I will list some pros and cons being a journeyman electrician, but some of these might apply generally to all electricians, apprentice and masters instead of just journeymen, but I'll still list these three pros and cons for you. Pro number one, pay. When you compare wages to journeymen and apprentices, journeyman electricians get paid similar to accountants, RN nurses, and sometimes even more or the same as electrical engineers. Pro number two, respect. There's a clear difference compared to how the company owners and project managers and the like treat journeymen compared to apprentices. Although I don't personally agree with this because I don't really think anybody else is better than anybody else. Um, I realize that I'm in the minority opinion when I say that because the construction world goes from treating you like a scrub to treating you like a boss man overnight as soon as you get that journeyman card in the mail. Even people outside the construction industry knew enough about my trade that when, you know, I would say I was an electrician, they would ask if I was a journeyman yet, and I would say, well, yeah, actually I am. They would kind of visually just look impressed, like, oh, good for you, and you kind of get that types of comments. So there is just more prestige that comes with being a journeyman compared to an apprentice. My third pro is getting to work on cooler stuff. What's unfortunate for apprentices, but great for journeymen, is most of the time, you don't get to work on the more interesting things, such as control work and more technical things until you are a journeyman. I thought the apprentice years were when you learn everything, but for the most part, I mostly just ran conduit and pulled wire and threw boxes in during my apprentice year. It wasn't until I was a journeyman that I started to get into cooler stuff like motor controls, low voltage lighting control, programming, VFDs, PLCs, generators, fire alarms, security, data, HVAC equipment, that sort of stuff until I was at the journey level. Being an electrician would be pretty boring if all you did was nail on boxes to studs all day. But if you are an apprentice on a 100 plex apartment building, you might be doing repetitive work to the point where you might feel more like a factory worker than an actual tradesman. Uh, personally, I didn't get the full experience of being a real electrician, I feel like, until I had my license because all of the cool stuff I got to learn about and install. Con number one, uh, politics. As a journeyman, you are going to have to deal with a lot more politics than you did when you were an apprentice. That's because you have five times as many contacts on your phone now, and office people typically tend to have some drama that they bring with them. It's true that it isn't just lacing up your boots and putting on your hard hat anymore as a licensed electrician. It's sometimes, you know, management on job sites can be pretty clown shoes. It oftentimes falls on your lap, even though, you know, it falls on your lap to put out fires and you have to take responsibility for something that isn't even your fault. Con number two, time off work. Getting time off work will be harder as a journeyman compared to an apprentice, since if the apprentice is gone, everyone can still work. But if you want to live in a state like mine, where ratio is one to three for journeymen to apprentices, if you aren't there, that means potentially three other people can't work that day. Depending on the situation, this can be a good thing or a bad thing. Some apprentices might like a day off every now and then. Other times you can just, if you're an apprentice, you can just get sent somewhere else to some other job site if your journeyman is gone. But let's say 
you work for a smaller shop and your journeyman goes on vacation for a week, potentially the apprentices might not be able to work for that whole week and therefore they might be out of wages and then the job might get behind, et cetera, et cetera. Your employer will have to give you time off. So what I mean by this con as time off work, as in you don't get more time off, you get the same amount of time off and your employer will probably give you that time off, but I'm just saying you'll probably feel guiltier about it because potentially other people might have to also not work because you're not at work. So just, I felt bad about it anyway when I would have to do that. And con number three, more responsibility. If you are someone who doesn't deal with stress well or someone who doesn't like to be the guy who makes the call, you might consider more responsibility a con of being a journeyman. When you get your license, all of a sudden material management becomes a bigger part of your life. Renting equipment becomes a bigger part of your life. Learning how to tie and rig up equipment, to pick it off semi-trucks with telehandlers and skid steers, or phone ringing all day, apprentices with questions on what to do, project managers harassing you about deadlines. This is the stuff that discourages some fourth year apprentices from ever even attempting to get their journeyman license because they see other journeymen be the boss and are intimidated by that reality. All right, folks, so there you have it. My summary of life as a journeyman electrician. Again, I'd like to thank the viewer for the comment and for the video suggestion. If you have any suggestions or more, more videos you'd like to see, please feel free to drop a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video and would like to see more content, please consider liking this video subscribing to my channel and checking out some of my other content or all of the above. Take care everybody.